Hello and welcome to this video where we're going to look at the updates and changes for Cubase 10. So this is an overview video, there's other videos on the channel in the description and I'll put up some links throughout the video which will go into these things in more detail but this is a quick overview of what's changed and the first thing as you can see here is that the theme is a lot darker so it's dark grey with white text throughout. That is customizable to a degree but it's definitely a dark theme with a light writing. Let's open up a project to see how that looks. And as you can see from there, that theme continues throughout. So we've got dark gray and white. Uh, the icons are much simpler than they used to be. There's a lot more use of text, etc. So things such as like the snap menu here used to have a different icon for each one and multiple combinations and this that, and the other, although they were never directly selectable. Uh, but that's now gone. That theme is something that I think you get used to. Certainly, having used it for a while, I found it much more easy on the eye after a while using it, you know, after a long session. And also, going back to Cubase 9.5 and before, it looks very shouty. If you want a real comparison, go back to Cubase SX2 and see what that looks like. It's, it's quite a drastic difference. So, it may at first sort of glance look a bit sort of mundane, but after all, this is music production software, not, you know bright shiny things to keep people amused uh, another change transport bar so the transport bar zone at the bottom here is expanded in terms of what you can put in there there's uh, more options so you can click through on some of these and make some additions to them etc as we can see here so there's there's different settings we can have on each of these so we can add in extra things that's apparently a work in progress and we're going towards something uh, more functional but the, the transport zone at the bottom, which sometimes is referred to as transport bar, is is probably the main place where those kind of things are going to be happening. Now, let's look at some of the new things. So firstly, Groove Agent. So Groove Agent SE has been updated to version 5, which gives quite a few new features. It's I think it's an underappreciated piece of Cubase's sort of armory, as it were, because it is actually really useful for making up sample drum kits etc it comes with a whole load obviously as presets so if we just load something up we can see we've got a lot we can do in there i've done a separate video on this because i think generally groove agent gets certainly in my experience gets overlooked as far as what you can do with it and there are some nice new features in five so the video i've done is kind of groove agent and well, Groove Agent SE, but and also version five, so a bit of everything there. But that's that's nice. Plenty of things to play around with there. Uh, new plugins. So as ever, everybody always wants new plugins. There's only one new new plugin, and that's Destroyer, which is a nice functional um, distortion plugin with some extras, filter, and some useful customizable controls in there. Again, this is in a separate video. But that's it. The rest of them that you get are, now that's obviously the normal compressor, but we've got things like transformer, etc. But again, in a separate video, you see that what's happened is most of the included plugins, which have been knocking around with Cubase since SX1 and SX2, have been updated to the new appearance. So this is all to make it so that on high DPI displays, particularly on Windows, you will actually get a reasonable display. Because if you've got a high DPI display, you'll probably know they're a bit blurry on earlier versions of Cubase. Unfortunately, I do not have access to one, so I can't really show you that. But certainly, they look a lot sharper than they uh, than they did because they've got a consistent appearance and nice big, generally a nice big central control for the most important control that you're going to have on there. Now, another thing which has been uh, brought in, which again is only little, but will save a fair bit of effort, is the ability to set up side chains. Now, again, I've got another video on this on the channel because it involves a little more setup but setting up sidechain now rather than setting up a pre-fade ascend or wherever from another track you can just simply set it up here you can add your input that you want to use and then control it straight away it doesn't do anything new it's actually just setting up a ascend on the channel that you select but it saves you having to navigate around your project particularly if you're using the same thing for multiple sidechains as often we do with things like kick drums now very audio has seen a bit of a upgrade now the upgrade really applies to the controls. So as we can see here, now you can, I'll just put that back into 
default mode. So we've got four handles, so we can control straightening directly. We control uh, quantize directly, and we can also move the beginning. So that's putting in a warp tab as well as moving the um, audio. Sorry, very audio uh, note block as well so that segment gets moved like that and you can move the end as well again this is covered in another video it's a really useful addition to the way that this works it makes it much easier to do things and much quicker because you're not constantly changing between audio warp and very audio so you can do those same kind of edits at the same time which is great let's just put that back how it was next up Audio alignment. So this is something that's going to save a lot of time. Again, there's another video on this, but in short, what you do is you can add a reference and then you can add the target and then you can align them. So I'll just zoom in so we can see that a bit better. And then you press align audio and it tries to work it out. And as you can see there, it's aligned those. Again, another video on that, but that's a real boon if you do this kind of work. So if you've got people who are doing, you know, um, multiple backing vocals or rapping etc where they're, they're multi-tracking themselves and their timing isn't amazing this can save hours and hours of work there are other ways to do that anyway but this just makes it a point and click operation which is great now on the subject of which the right click menu has changed so if you hold down shift and right click we used to get an enormous menu and in fact i'll superimpose this on the screen so there is the cubase 9.5 menu and here is the new menu. So it's smaller. Now, there's been a bit of a comment about oh, how it doesn't allow you to do this, that, and the other. Now, the options are always available. You can get everything you want from the menus, but these are the most common things. And certainly, most of the time when I'm doing right-clicking, I'm doing either processes, kind of workman-like things, or things like bounce selection or render in place and quantize, or less often these because normally I'd be doing a keyboard shortcut for those kind of things. But those are much easier. Now, the original menu, as you've already seen, is a huge, great, big, intimidating thing. And even though I know where things are, I still sometimes would get lost with it because there's however many options there are. So I think this is a really good move forward. But I know not everybody does because I've seen quite a lot of comment about how this is too simplistic and a favorite function X is missing. But unfortunately, I think that's the way things need to go sometimes when you come down maybe it would be nice to be able to customize this hopefully that will be coming in the future but there we go now the mix console has seen a little bit of love so if we open up the mix console we will see that there are snapshots now again i've got a video on that elsewhere on the channel but we've got these snapshots here so they allow you to save all of the mixer settings other than uh, insert automation which doesn't get saved which is a little disappointing because obviously you probably use plenty of insert automation but we can make a snapshot of the mixer at any time so let's say i just set all of these to particular values and this that and the other and then i can just create a new snapshot with a little camera here and then later on in my mix i've decided oh no i need to turn all these down and invert my panning and so on and then i'll make another snapshot there and i can just go back to that one whenever so you can see there Again, there's a video on this with more detail elsewhere on the channel, but that makes a lot of sense for a lot of mixed situations. It's not perfect because, say, the insert doesn't get um, the insert automation doesn't get saved, although the insert effects do, and the routing doesn't get saved. So if you've created you know group channels, etc., and played around with the routing of those channels, that doesn't get saved with each snapshot. But there's a lot of stuff there which is useful, and it saves you creating multiple versions. Now, something which is probably less, you, I, I think it's less useful, but I'm a bit of a misery, is uh, pictures of VST instruments. So now we've got these pictures of these VST instruments, which are available here. And if you've got any third-party ones that you've not got a picture of, you can take a picture of it. So we will try that now. So let's try making a helm. And oh, let's not download that. Thanks, Helm. But you see the little camera here. So that adds a picture to there. So we will see that picture hopefully appear here. And there you go. So if you choose to pick your VST instruments or your effects via how they look, then this is the thing for you. I'll be honest, I don't really 
choose things like that but maybe there might come a time when i've got so many of them or my memory only works for images and then i go oh yeah that's the one the one with the stripes across it etc but you can do that that seems to be something that people are keen on and while we're over this side of things we've got all of the content so there's six new content sets and again there's a few videos on the channel of this so there's an overview going through a few samples but also i've just thrown together literally thrown together some songs using only samples from each one just to give you more of an idea of, of the flavor of them so there's analog techno and blockbuster hip-hop vault mystic spaces raw ambience and soul assembly so those are the new ones for this so there's an overview elsewhere on the channel which is quite a long video because there's quite a lot of them particularly in the case of i think raw ambience which is three gigs and then i've made a very brief song which i've literally just thrown together a few samples that i liked to give an idea of what those uh sounded like so again you can watch those if you want a bit more detail and a bit more of an idea of what the content is now you may have noticed when I added the helm track the add track of any type box has changed so this is quite nice because it was always a bit wide and a bit unwieldy because you were looking you know, from one side of the screen to the other so I think this moving all the actual settings together because you generally know you know this inputs and outputs and configuration and so on in the case of the audio one it's nice because you can open the vst or audio connections window so if you need to make a new input if you're multi-track recording and you've got loads of inputs or whatever and you need to just customize set one up you can set one up and then it'll be reflected in this window straight away so that's a nice little touch again it's not night and day it's not going to change the world but it does change your workflow and the same is true for the add track of all the other types so instrument track and even midi track they're all slightly more keyboard friendly than they were but not not perfectly so yet they seem to be improving with each version of this which is nice now finally uh, export audio mix down that's had the new appearance treatment now this has recently changed so this is certainly much better than it was going to be because it was going to be a multi-tab one which was quite unfriendly but fortunately uh, literally at the last minute this has been changed so now we've got this window which looks very much like the previous window now although it's not exactly the same so you'll see why so there on the right is the keybase 9.5 one so you can see the difference between the two now this comes up when either you export multiple channels you see we get this central section here or or in this case and we're important uh, exporting using cycle markers so i haven't got a cycle marker on there so we won't see that but you can see the window gets quite big maybe its behavior will uh, be a little more moderate so in terms of things moving around etc but that's if if you're not happy about that rest assured it's a lot nicer than the one that you would have got had you got the previous version of it which was uh, a bit of a pain because it had half these features here and then had another tab for these and if you're changing you know these options etc what you're doing often then you need to flip between them it's much better to be able to see all these things all in one and hopefully at some point the style of it will calm down a bit but that's that's one of the two kind of negative things about it so there's that and the other thing is the floating transport bar which always just used to be called the transport bar but now you have to differentiate because this uh this young imposter at the bottom seems to have taken our old friend's clothes and you can no longer have this in two rows okay it has to be this this one wide bar again similar options as the fixed transport bar down the bottom and we can have different things you know time etc but you can see it can get um significantly out of hand already so the, i'm i'm on an hd screen and i've already gone over and i haven't gone crazy with all the options so it's uh, it's something which apparently is not going to change which i'm a little disappointed about because obviously once you start putting in all of the features you can see why you want to have two rows i know obviously i mean my normal daw is 4k but there we go so that brings us to the end of this overview video on the changes made to cubase 10. don't forget there are other videos on the channel covering topics in more detail such as side chaining plugins audio alignment content groove agent se5 and very audio 
as well as the six little demo songs that I've put together to give you a more in-depth idea of how the content packs sound. Now this brings us to the final point of whether or not it's worth upgrading. Now obviously the cost of this depends on where you are. The further behind you are, the more expensive it gets, but I know plenty of people who are still using Cubase 6 totally happily and others who need to have the latest version regardless of what the feature set is. I'd suggest watching through the videos to get an idea of the features that are in there and the content and then taking a view from there. If you've enjoyed this video, please like it and subscribe to the channel. Also, check out my book, The Complete Guide to Music Technology Using Cubase 10. It provides you with a thorough grounding in all aspects of using Cubase, music technology and music theory. Follow the link for more information and to order a copy today. Thanks for watching.